Hello. Hello. Welcome back to week number four. Four. What's the what's the theme this month? It's block party. I can't do it. It's block party. Everyone's invited. Where we've been talking about friendship. And it's been an amazing series so far. This is our last sure. week of it. It is. It is. That's so sad. Uh, but <laughs> we, it's time to get off your feet. Get up. <laughs> Let's worship for the last time with this song. Let's do it. Do it. Jesus, you have been so faithful. Jesus, you have been so true. I will be forever thankful. Cause I never had a friend like you. Help me to be who you've been to me. To everyone I see. Let us love one another. You with me in the darkest valley. You with me on the mountain top. I'm thankful that you never leave me and that your love will never stop. Help me to be who you've been to me, to everyone I see. Let us love one another. Okay, great job for the final time this month with that amazing song that I absolutely love. So that means that we need to check in with Haley for this last week. Oh yeah. Let's see what friends her. lesson we're gonna learn with her. other side and I will have the perfect imaginary burger. Hey there, Haley here. I am practicing for a cookout I'm having next week and I'm not actually cooking anything right now. <laughs> I'm inside. That would be a cook in. <laughs> so I've never really cooked for any of my friends before so I just wanted to be prepared because I want them to still be my friends after the cookout's over. Just kidding, that's not how friendship works. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. I don't think friends should stop being friends for little things like food tasting bad. Mmm, yeah, it's delicious. And I think you can even stay friends with someone if they say, accidentally burn you with a hot potato. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato, ha, ha, ha. Friendship can last through most anything. Unless a friend makes fun of my hat, then it's over. Oh, time to flip an imaginary burger. <sighs> Woo. Today's story is about a time when one of Jesus' friends did something really bad. Jesus could have flipped out. <laughs> but he didn't do that. He didn't 
do that. I'll see you soon. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, can't turn the camera off with the mitts. Sorry. So. Yeah. Yeah. When friends do something really bad to you, and you know how hard it is not to just flip out. Flip out. Get so mad. I'm so mad. Okay. Well, anyways, let's see mm. how Jesus handled it in our story. So, cozy up. <laughs> the Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Peter hauled in the knotted net yet again as the first light of dawn gleamed in the eastern sky. Empty. Not a single fish all night. Thomas shook his head. Uh, I doubt we'll catch a thing before it's time to take the boat in. John studied Peter thoughtfully. Peter, you didn't really want to catch fish anyway, did you? You just wanted to get out in the boat and do something normal. Peter shrugged, but he knew John was right. Over the past few weeks and months, everything in his life had turned upside down. First, Peter had shown the courage to speak the truth about his friend Jesus. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Many people wanted to make Jesus king, even though the religious leaders hated him. The day before Jesus was killed, Peter had promised Jesus that he would follow him anywhere and even give up his life for Jesus. But that very evening, Jesus was arrested. Peter was so scared, he told three different people he wasn't Jesus's friend. I don't know that man. Peter felt sick about what he'd done, especially when Jesus was nailed to the cross and died. But then he returned to life. He appeared to his friends. It was amazing, incredible. Everyone was excited beyond belief. Except Peter must have wondered. Is Jesus mad at me? Am I still his friend? Does he still love me? Now Peter found himself in the boat, trying to figure it all out. His fingers tightened on the wet rope as he prepared to cast a net one more time. As he glanced over on the shoreline, he saw a figure standing there. Friends, don't you have any fish? Nope, not one. Throw your net on the right side of the boat. There you will find some fish. The seven disciples in the boat exchanged glances as Thomas laughed. I seriously doubt it. Do you guys have anything better to do? Let's give it a try. Together, the men heaved the heavy wet net back into the sea on the other side. Hey, I think we've got something. Bring it on in. There's one fish. Two fish. A red fish. Ugh. A blue fish. And another one. And another uh, 10. Whoa, need some help here. The net was so full of fish, they couldn't haul it into the boat. They began towing it to shore. John gaped at the man still standing on the beach. It's the Lord. Excitement raced through Peter's veins. He was about to see Jesus again. But just as quickly, guilt gnawed at his stomach. Facing Jesus meant he had to face how he denied knowing Jesus. But it's Jesus. I've got to see him no matter what. Grabbing his coat, Peter jumped out of the boat and into the water. He half ran and half waded to the beach when he discovered that Jesus started a small bonfire. Fish and bread were already toasting over the flames. He's got some and he's making breakfast for us. Jesus smiled at Peter. Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Uh, yes, Lord. Peter ran back to the lapping water to help his friends haul their fish to shore. 153. You counted? Don't doubt it. Jesus gestured to the disciples to join him around the fire. Come and have breakfast. As the disciples gathered, Jesus offered them bread to eat. John whispered to Peter. This is what he did when we last ate together at the Passover meal. When breakfast finished, the disciples rose to take care of their fish. Peter found himself walking beside Jesus. There were so many things he wanted to say, but he couldn't find the words. Simon Peter, do you really love me more than these others do? Peter swallowed hard. Surely Jesus knew what he felt. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
feed my lambs. Peter remembered how Jesus would compare people to sheep in his stories. Peter, do you really love me? Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. Sheep? People. Peter waited in his mind. Jesus must be telling Peter to take care of the people who had followed him. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Just as Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, he now confirmed three times that he loved Jesus. What's more, Jesus wanted Peter to go out and share that love with others. He's forgiven me, even after what I did. Peter, things are going to get even more difficult for you. You are going to be led places you do not want to go. Peter slowly nodded his head. He was willing to do anything Jesus asked of him. Follow me. Yes, Lord, I will. Because Jesus had forgiven him, Peter was now free to share the love of God with those around him without carrying around a heavy load of guilt. Okay, thank goodness Jesus forgave Peter. I mean, for how many people Peter reached with the good news of Jesus, who knew who knows how many would have mess, messed messed mm, missed out on knowing Jesus. Peter was flinging them newspapers going down the road. Here's your news. Here's, here's your, your news. Good news. Here's your I didn't news. know where you're going with that. Get it going. Get it going. Here's your news. Anyways, here's your so news. it can be stop, stop. It can be so hard to forgive friends when they hurt you because they're the ones that you trust, you know, but we all make mistakes yep. and we all have hurt someone before. Mm -hmm. And if you know that guilt feeling for doing the wrong thing, oh, it's the worst. Yeah. It's so heavy and just, ugh. Ah. But I'm sure most of you from that feeling also know the amazing freedom for when somebody forgives you and you guys get to move on with your relationships. Reunited and it feels so good. Let's check back in with, is it Erica or Haley? It's Haley. Is it Haley what? this week? What? <laughs> what week are we in? Our notes say Erica and that's a lie, but I forgive you notes because that's what friends do. Reunited. Okay, stop it. Okay. So, picture this. You have a best friend. You do everything together. You eat together. You play games together. You tell each other everything. And then, when your life gets really hard and you need your friend there the most, your friend pretends she doesn't even know you. That's not cool, friend. Wouldn't that make you so mad? It would make me want to say goodbye to that friend forever. But Jesus didn't do that when Peter pretended not to know him. Instead, even though he must have felt so hurt inside, Jesus forgave Peter. Now, I know what you may be thinking. It was pretty cool for Jesus to forgive Peter like that. It was. But guess what? Jesus forgives you and me like that too. Anytime we mess up, we break a rule, or we do something we know is wrong, Jesus forgives us. That's because he loves us so much, and because our relationship is more important to him than our mess ups. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. Friends, forgive one another. Jesus forgives us, so we should forgive others. Our friendships should be more important than our mess ups. I'm not saying it's easy to forgive. It's not. You're going to need God's help, but get this. When you choose to forgive, it can help you feel better inside. It can help your friend feel better inside, and it'll make your cookouts way more enjoyable. <gasps> Speaking of, this imaginary corn is almost done roasting. Oh, look at that. Mm. Oh, what? Oh, this is gonna taste so good when they're real. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, again with the mitts. So just like Haley said for our main point that friends forgive each other, we have to remember that we need forgiveness just like people who hurt us do. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Got that? So I want you guys to take the next 60 seconds. 60 seconds. And talk with your family. Of, or one minute. Yeah, whichever one you want to do. Talk with your family of a friend you might need to forgive. And then take time to pray together. <laughs> Asking for courage and grace during those hard times. All right? So, ready? 
set, go. Yeah. All right, guys, so that just about wraps it up for this week. Wrap it up. Actually, for this month. Month. Ooh, last lesson. Ooh. But next week, we'll begin a whole new series. Guess who's back? I don't know who's back. Back again. No, that's what I'm saying. Guess who's back? Um, us. Duh. You and me. Me and you. All right. So. Anyways, so we'll see you guys uh, next week, same time, 7 o'clock. Just love me. Go from there. All right. Bye, guys. See you. Bye. <laughs>